Right, everyone, welcome back to the Par 4 podcast presented by Golf Magic. Today, you're joining myself, Andy, Johnny, and Will to talk about all things golf and much, much more. Today, we're going to recap the Masters won by Scotty Scheffler, which has pocketed all of us a healthy chunk of money, and talk about a lot more, such as Jason Day's vest, Tiger Woods, golf in general. Guys, I'm going to touch upon Andy and Johnny first. Let's talk to you. What do you think about the Masters? Mm -hmm. How did it go? Did you enjoy it? I really enjoyed it. Obviously, it was the outcome that, um, well, I was certainly looking for. I know you, you guys picked Sheffield as well. Um, four-shot win. Uh, it maybe wasn't quite as comfortable as, as, as that, you know, the four shots during the week. He was, it was a little bit squeaky, I thought, on Saturday where he slipped, what was it, two shots behind, Mr. Tiddler on, on 10. And I thought, here we go again, you know, his, his putting woes were coming back. But, but thankfully, you know, that was just a blip and he got straight back on the horse. And that is, I guess, one stat this season. I know, was it, Scheffler leads about 28 different categories of stats this season. But one of them is bounce back. And he certainly did that. Um, slow start to the, the, the final round uh, where, where he took a one-shot lead uh, into Sunday. But really from the eighth, you know, that was the prime Scheffler that, that we've sort of um, got to love this season. Um, three birdies in a row from from the eighth, as I say, drained an eight-footer there, nearly hold his approach shot on nine. Uh, a great birdie on 10 from about 10 feet. Um, took in two shots clear, and then Aberg put it in the water. Um, a lot of people have sort of been reacting to that shot. You know, you can't miss left there on 11, uh, and he did. Uh, is that an experience? It was his first time around Augusta. Possibly, but you have to sort of hand it to him, you know, to come runner up on debut. Uh, incredible performance, I thought, from from Aberg, who was one of Johnny's picks, uh, a brilliant pick from Johnny. Homer, unfortunate, you know, on twelve, catching the the down slope, probably didn't deserve to be straight in a bush. Uh, just just really unfortunate, I thought there, and that was that was um, pretty much the tournament over, I guess you could say. I mean, it's never over until it's over, but but really, then you know, what did he go? Three shots clear. Um, and it was pretty comfortable, but but Scheffler played the last eleven in five under par, uh, thoroughly deserved it in my opinion. Uh, he's the best player in the world by a mile, um, and yeah, he, he delivered the goods as I thought. And um, I think I predicted a four shot win uh, on the podcast last week, so uh, I'll take that. Very good, Johnny. What did you think about the uh, the Masters? You similar similar thoughts to Andy? Did you did you enjoy it as well as your hypothetical winnings that we got from uh, picking Scotty? Um... Did I enjoy it? I thought it was like so close to being a vintage year of Masters Golf. And I won't begrudge Scheffler of his victory because I think he fully deserved it. But I thought it was a bit of a kind of damp ending to what had been up to that point quite an eventful and quite exciting week of golf. I mean, the, like the conditions on Friday kind of separating um, the, the pack effectively because a lot of people who got the better end of the conditions did, did better. Uh, Tiger making the cut and then completely kind of falling off a cliff was a bit disappointing, but kind of really cool. Um, but I, I, I still, I mean, Andy's kind of touched on it there. I'm just so disappointed that Homer, Aberg, Morikawa, Kame Man Corner all just made just silly, silly mistakes. If we'd even had like one of them just to kind of chase Scheffler on the back nine, and I know that Aberg was, well, I mean, he finished four shots back, but it would have just been so exciting to see two people going at it, like basically making yeah. it into kind of match play golf going down the stretch where you're forced to make birdies. I mean, it didn't, yeah. didn't seem like Scheffler needed much encouraging to do so because he was just <clears throat> yeah, imperious with his iron play. But it was a kind of reminiscent a bit of when Matsuyama won and kind yeah. of when Ram won. The back nine, when it was meant to be so exciting, became a bit of a formality, which I thought was a bit of a shame. Mm. Mm. It was, as you said, it was so close to being a, uh, a Masters for the ages, but I think... As much as we want it to be a down the stretch incredible tournament, it hasn't really been that for a while. And now we are looking at Scotty. He is now statistically on the best run since Tiger Woods. He's now just overtaken VJ Singh. Well, I'm going to come to you here because now I'm I'm thinking of the rest of the year. Can anyone beat Scotty? And I'm not just any other tournament. I know he's playing this week, but I want to focus on the other, mm -hmm. the other three important ones, the other three majors. Are we now thinking? Hang on a second. Is he going to? win every single major what do you think i don't know it's, it's interesting because he's almost like the modern day tiger right he's got the arnold palmer and the players and the masters all obtained in one year which i believe tiger has the only is the only other person who's ever done that yep. which is pretty incredible and 
for Scotty to perform the way he did. I think he was favourite to win, regardless at the beginning of the week. Um, it would have been nice to have someone else win, but I think he totally wholeheartedly deserved it. Um, even like his ninth, his, on the ninth hole, his approach, which came into like six inches from the hole, was mm -hmm. just, I thought it was going in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And annoyingly, I believe, yeah, the ninth was where Collins started going completely pear shaped. Because I mean, yeah, obviously, well, I, yeah. I, I'm so gutted for my boy. So got it. <laughs> Considering all you guys were laughing at me, no one, no one even thought of backing. I, it's coming out. No one even thought of backing Colin from the get go. Hence why he was forty to one at the beginning of the week. No one thought in their eyes, oh, Colin's going to be up there with the best. I, I called it. I yeah. said he's if he doesn't win, he's going to be top ten. Right. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, to have him in the in the final pairing with with Scotty. Uh, was just was just great. I mean, I got a text from Johnny while I was out, and I couldn't quite believe it. I was like, "Hang on, he's getting as excited as I am about this." I'm like, "No way!" Like, I was I was gassed. But yeah, it's uh, one of those things. And then I think it's the same with Oberg with Colin at eleventh hole. I think Colin's maybe got a bit greedy in the water, which is a shame. Um, but but yeah, no. But other than that, no. I think Scotty fully deserves that. Would have been nice if it was really tight coming into the last, but. You know what he deserved it, and to have the looming uh, idea of his wife potentially going into labour. Uh, I mean, if if I get a text and I'm in a conversation before I tee off, I'm playing horrifically because that's in the back of my mind. For him, <laughs> for him to go ahead and almost blank that out of him while his wife could potentially go in labour or whatever. I know there was talks about it um, with him going. Oh, if if, he, if it does happen, he's going to withdraw. He's yeah, well, well, well deserving of that. Um, but no, I think if he's a he's a tough man to beat. He's he's class across the board, um, and he really is unstoppable right now. Um, so interesting interested to see. Sorry. Sorry, I was just interested in what you're saying about the eleventh because Aberg obviously yeah Aberg went in the water, Morakal went in the water, mm -hmm. and then Sheffler kind of just showed them like how to play it really, didn't he? Just yeah, he was like, like come on, no, no come on, come on, Jets, like, this is how you play the hole. Basically missed the green to the right. And mm. got up and down. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he got no, up and down. No, he missed the uh, six. Oh, he missed the Nintendo, yeah. didn't he? That's the only mistake he that made. Was really. It was the right. <laughs> it was like, it yeah. was the right. It was that was basically the right thing to do at the time. And yeah. I just think that showed a kind of like maturity. Yeah. That, yeah. But yeah. you've got a, you have yeah. to give it to um to Ludwig though. Like he played the tournament as if he'd played Augusta before. Oh, he knew yeah. he knew where to place the ball. And it's yeah. like every single shot he took, even when he uh he was like a bogey, double bogey. He was coming off the green smiling. Yeah, Every shot of him, he was just cheering, smiling. It's like he you can tell he was out there having fun, Yeah, which is ridiculous. You think the pressure that he's got on him to be playing his debut Masters and he comes second. Yeah. That's why he, he's, like, he's a breath of fresh air to the game, I think he is. And, you know, yeah. I, I'll be the first to say, you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe his rise um, initially when mm. he was on the map, you know, and Donald was saying he's going to be in the team before he'd really done anything. And I think, you know, I'm not alone in that. I know there were a lot of people who were like, really? Like, wow, but Donald saw something. A lot of, you know, a lot of the guys on tour saw something about him. And wow, I mean, what a talent. This, this guy is going to yeah. be 24 years old. Um, it's mental. Has arguably going to be one of their best ever players. I mean, I, I think he's going to win. <laughs> loads of majors he's going to be world number one it's a matter of time um you know obviously Sheffer's in that position and he will be for a while but i mm -hmm. think maybe when Sheffer's not quite as dialed in as he is at the moment i think aberg is going to come through and certainly be a top five player for, for years to come um i think mm -hmm. it all went downhill when he uh, had the snack knocked out of his hand and he was walking up <laughs> yeah the yeah that? honestly yeah. Oh, literally oh, yeah he goes around um like fist bumping everyone and as soon as it yeah. dropped I was like, yeah, this is going to screw him up right now. And even yeah. he stopped and looked at the fan and was yeah. like, I, I, as soon as that happened, I was like, oh no, it's like, this is, this is it now. This is it. Such a shame. Don't tell him say he won't be having any chocolate bars near fans anytime soon. <laughs> I think his performance is almost, un I mean, everyone is marvelling at it, but he is going against someone who is the only person who's played better than him is Tiger Woods in his prime. So, I think the fact that he is nearly went toe to toe with him for four rounds is genuinely ridiculous for a, for a course as well where experience breeds success type thing. Like we've never seen a yeah. uh, someone in his first major at the Masters win. We've seen obviously have people who in their yeah. first Masters appearance win, but 
I think anyone else that age would be absolutely terrified. But the fact he had a, a silly grin on his face the whole time, I think with the more experience to come, I mean, he is going against the best player of recent time. So it's going to be difficult to kind of combat that. But I think Scotty, I would say Scotty didn't even have his A1 game at the Masters in certain, no, certain periods. There no. were mistakes that were made. I think we've seen him in his previous yeah. victories, such as the players out at the AP. I think he played better there. And the fact, I don't, he did get out. He was at points he was seen wrong in them, but he did make a few mistakes. So I think that's almost like, oh my God, he won by four. And I don't think he was proper Scotty. Is uh, alarm bells are ringing for everyone. Agree. But I think for round three Fair and point. four, the alarm bells were ringing the most for uh, Tiger Woods, who we touched upon quite a lot in uh, the last podcast. We titled it "Should Tiger Woods yeah. Retire?" And I think. Initially, I think well, my tail was certainly between my legs when he uh, was very comfortably made the cut and was looking very strong. Unfortunately, we saw uh, Augusta National eat him up for the uh, the final 36 holes. And that was it. Uh, maybe something it was 82 that he shot. Um, was am I correct in saying yeah, that yeah. on the Saturday? Worst was, ever, um, worst yeah, beat him up for 50 times money. Yeah, that's um, it's something that no one wants to see. And I think the person who wants to see it the least is Tiger Woods himself. I don't think. He wants yeah. to consistently play majors and do that. It's it's not good for him. I don't think it's good for anyone because he must make him feel bad. Yeah. I, I he's not going to retire. I don't think he should, we've shown that he doesn't have to. I mean, the fact that he can do thirty six holes is good, but I mean, even lives not that. So, I mean, Andy, what what's what's next for Tiger now? I mean, I've been sort of I'm an, I'm an R and about it um, really from the first round and. I've, you changed your mind twice during the coverage. Honestly, I did. In in our in our what's so good after the first round, I was like, I think, I think, I think he can win again. I mean, I mean, I wasn't really sure. What to do. Genuinely thought he could win again, and then I saw him the Sunday red, wasn't it? Second second um, second round was okay. Obviously, you know, he had to come back and finish it and and, and play. Was it 20, 23 holes? He had to eventually play on on Friday. I think that unfortunately. Yeah. I know it's only an extra five holes, but I think with the wind and, and the, the conditions, you know, Friday was brutal. Um, I just think physically and mentally, even for someone as strong as Tiger, I think that just had it, um, had it bearing on him. And that's unfortunate, right? He, he, he did okay. He was still in the hunt. He was one over. Um, but I think just taking all of that into the next day just finished him off, just in terms of the walk and getting around the course. Um, I just... Mm-hmm. I, do you know what? I, as I say, I'm still having an iron about it. I think there was some really good in there. Obviously, he set a new record for the cuts, and and that's amazing. It's not something he's going to want to pride himself on. You know, he he said, "I'm going to be in the Masters because I want to win it." He he's, he he doesn't want to finish dead last yeah. like he did in you know of those that made the cut. Um, you know, that's he'll look at that and he'll be a bit embarrassed by it. Probably knowing Tiger is just that's that's just how he is. He's a he's a competitor. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to be there. But I, you know, I don't think this is the end for sure. Um, Augusta, as everyone says, Augusta is one of the toughest walks in golf, mm-hmm. and I just think it is. Good. He knows it like the back of his hand that place. But um, I just want to. I think I want to see him on a flat course, you know, and just nice conditions, nice and sunny. That for me will be the biggest test as to whether he can still win. Yeah. Um, he's saying he's gonna gonna keep playing once a month. Um, you know, let's see how he let's see how he get gets on. Uh, he's been written off before. Uh, all right, you know this that was before a car crash that nearly killed him. Um, but you know, I, I still think there is. I, ju- I would just love to see sort of one. I want to see him get that one more win on the PGA Tour, get that outright record on yeah. his own. I think he deserves it. I hope he can do it. Yeah, he's absolutely. forty-eight years old now. You know, he's not getting any younger. Um, but let's say, as I say, I think there was some good in there, and he putted really well. It was his driving and, it, and his iron play that, that sort of let him down. He had some unbelievable um, up and downs. I don't know if you saw some of them on, on uh, certainly on Thursday and Friday, just from, from some crazy yeah. places he was getting up and down. So it's still there in the locker, um, and I don't think that'll ever ever leave him. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I, look, I hope he, I hope he can win one more time. I don't know about you guys, but I just I, I would love to see it, um, and I'm not going to write him off just yet. I'm going to write him off. I think we're getting greedy now with what we want from Woods. Like he gave us the 29 Masters yeah. and for some reason they were like, we can't be satisfied with that. I think More. this weekend, especially the weekend, <laughs> did you see him on Sunday? More. Did you see him on Sunday? It was an absolute sweat fest. <laughs> his, his shirt I know. Was like Those... red to black by the yeah. time. The I think the... Um... Those Sunday shirts sweat. really don't hold the sweat, do yeah. they? No. no right. I mean, it was great to see the guy in Sunday red, finally, at a weekend. But 
Oh my god, I think he was. It was yeah, Sunday. He didn't finish on nine. I was a sweat bucket. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my hat into the uh, Tigers never gonna win again um, pile. Um, I think I, I don't think it's because of his game. I just think he just can't walk for seventy two. I, I don't disagree. With you. I don't think he will. I don't think he will win again. I hope he does. That's it's kind of a heart overhead, right? Mm. I, I just hope he does. But no, if you if you gave me a load of money to put on whether it would happen or not, I would. I, I don't think it will. Uh, and as I say, I think he said. I think it was proof is in the pudding. Seventy two holes is a lot for him to get around. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, I can't. Yeah, I yeah. can't see it happening. As much as I would uh, love it to happen, I just think his his uh, his time has come. I don't want him to retire because yeah. I think it's still quite quite fun having him around. But yeah. I think we can. Uh, I think we can. I, I think it's like we said though. We said part of like an show showreel. But I, I think he's. Uh, yeah, I think he's done 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 for the entering the winner's circle. Then I said the time. tour could bring back a, a like put a rule together where you could use golf carts. You know, maybe they, they get that yeah. situation where they go, this is fine. We're just going to have, you know, we're just going to be really lax about it. If you want to use a cart, you can use a cart. If you want to play in shorts, play in shorts. Just let it, Andy, just, just let it go. Just let it go. Then I think he can win. You want that, mate? <laughs> Come on, like, he can't use a cart. We, we call golf a sport. He can't drive around in it. It's not race cars. It's not F1. He, he has win to walk car, it. I don't <laughs> Yeah, like I, he, I, 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 don't I, don't but I don't think he. Will. And, I, and I hope in a year's time, I, I we all go. We're so stupid. He just won at something, you know. But I, as we said, there's so many talented people on tour right now. Tiger's one of those people, but I don't think for 72 holes at this stage. And I think rather than being sad about it, it's like celebrate how well he's done. Hopefully, we see him again. Hopefully, we see him play some decent golf. But. Yeah. It's it's we're at a really lovely stage as well where we don't we love him we don't really need him to be at at the top we have got really a really exciting roster of people now um, I particularly enjoy him uh, handing notes to amateur golfers as well whatever that may be well what do you think uh, what do you think the note was that he handed to that one wonder, wonderful twenty year old amateur now keep in mind if you say anything rude I will leave it well that's the thing like it, I was going to say speaking of Tiger like. Although he was playing horrifically, you could still see that he was giving time to talk, talk to um, to Neil Shipley, um, and actually converse with him. He wasn't blanking him, which was really nice. And to be Neil in that situation where you're an amateur, his mate is on the bag, going, "Okay, I'm playing the Masters. Come on, do you want to be on the bag with me?" And you're playing against the goat of all time. Like, not only would he have had the biggest crowd, um, which I mean, that, I mean, I don't know what, if, about you, but that really puts me off if people are watching me tear off. <laughs> But like to have the biggest crowd going. That happens to you all the um, time. The biggest crowd on the course. <laughs> well, you know, it's when I say crowd, I mean people having a beer at the uh, at the <laughs> at the. Uh, yeah. Someone watching his <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, no, I was when I saw the press conference and um, the guy asked him, and he kind of looked looked to the side and was like, "Yeah, like what the hell?" Um, Christ knows. I mean. It's it's very very bizarre. I mean, he could have said anything. Um, yeah, Go on, humor me. What do you say? Go on. What did he, what did uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I really can't think what what would have been on that note. <laughs> I don't know. It, it was shot. It it was shot. That's tough. Yeah. I don't know what I think. Uh, people were thinking it could have been a phone number, like it could have been his phone, yeah, Tiger's yeah. phone number, not not yeah, anyone else. Yeah. Before you Keep get any touch. thoughts in your head, it could have been something like True. that. Saying, "Oh, message me, we'll, we'll come chat." And maybe from a privacy point of view, you didn't want to say that because they didn't want media yeah, yeah. frenzy going crazy about it. But it was somewhat of a a strange end to uh, that little fairy tale. Mm. But I think, as you said, there will what. I think we've noticed then, and I think we've noticed with Tiger over the last few years, I think his demeanor's changed somewhat to be a little bit more laid back. Yeah. Like if we if we go back yeah. to the point of Tiger, I think in 2013, we should have won a few majors there. He was almost like a psychopath in the way he presented himself to the press and things. Really, really robotic. Whereas I think now you see that smile a little bit more. I think you see him a little bit more relaxed. I don't know if it's because he is yeah. accepting his now position rather than not at number one in the world. He's a lot further back, but we'll have to see. But there's someone who is kind of accepting where he is. There's there's someone who isn't really accepting as to his current form. Rory McIlroy is uh, had a bit of a roller coaster year in terms of rumours, in terms of form. And I mean, it's, he wasn't too bad at the Masters, but the thing is, he was never in it, was he? He was never. We never glanced the top no. leaderboard to see the Northern Irishman there. It was a 
a really disappointing, I think, uh, result for him because no one ever was tuning in to mm-hmm. see him shoot 65. I mean, I wanted him personally to shoot 26 on the front nine on Sunday, but that no, obviously didn't happen. But we always we do have, have hope for Rory. <laughs> Um, Andy, what do you mm-hmm. think? What do you think? What's next for Rory now? Like it's, it was quite a disappointing and sad tournament for him because I, I always love looking up for Augusta mm-hmm. National, looking and seeing Rory somewhere there. I mean, his form, apart from when he's missed mm-hmm. a few cuts in the yeah. last few years, he's always been kind of top ten. This was the first tournament where it was just a little bit lacking some juice, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it's well, it's just getting frustrating now, isn't it? We're just sounding like a broken record yeah. every time we come around to the Masters. You know, it's oh, Rory can win the career Grand Slam, and look, I'd love to see him do it. I'm a massive fan of McIlroy's game and what he's done for the game and, and everything. But I didn't fancy him last week. I really didn't fancy. I didn't fancy him or Rahm, and I couldn't believe they were well, they were second and third in the betting because they're Rahm and McIlroy, and, and on any, you know, if they turn up, then then they, they would look great value, but. I just they're not they weren't coming into the Masters with really any form. Um, but yeah, Macro, what was he? I think sixty-seven percent in fairways hit. I mean, that's not great round Augusta, where it's pretty wide open. And so for someone who supposedly drives it the best of anyone, I don't think he had his, mm. his A game on with the driver. Um, I think he was fifty-one percent in greens in reg. Uh, um, you know, arguably one of the best ball strikers in the world. I think he's really struggling with his irons at the minute. I think that's why he went to Butch. He's, he's still got this left miss that is just uncharacteristic of him. Uh, you just wouldn't normally see that from McIlroy. So I, I, don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. His, his putting was okay. I don't think it was a bad week of putting. I think he had, um, he had a two, three putts on Sunday, which didn't help when he was sort of trying to push into the top 10. But there's just something missing. Really, really is missing from him this year. Yeah. I mean, what, he's had one top 10 on the PJ Tour this season. This is Rory McIlroy. This is just unheard of really you, you, you would say okay he won in Dubai in the season but DP World Tour event he should be winning those let's be honest um, mm. I'm, I'm going to be controversial here and I, I I think he needs to change it up and I know it's been a there'll be some people who won't agree with this at all but I think you have a caddy out there right now who is one of the best in the business who is available and I think he needs a fresh pair of eyes on the bag I think his mate his, you know his best mate has been on the bag since 2017 now in Harry Diamond and great. You know, they've, they've won a lot of tournaments together, not won a major together. Um, I think he needs to, to mix it up. Um, you know, with all these yeah. live golf rumours swirling, which we, we believe is a load of nonsense from what, what we're hearing. Um, I think he needs to really mix it up. And I think he needs to get um, a new caddy on the bag. I really do. And I, I would I would be going all in for uh, Jim Bones Mackay, who's just left Justin Thomas. I think he's one of the best caddies in the world. I think, all right, they had their little scuffle, supposedly, at the Ryder Cup. I think that was just a <laughs> yeah. moment thing. I know they, they, they get on. They, they've already made up, kissed and made up. It's... Um, I just think going to work with your best mate is 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 nice. But if McElroy really wants to, to, you know, he's 34 years old, he should be in the peak of his powers right now. And to me, I just think his game is yeah. only going one way and it's not up when you look at what Scheffler's doing. And I think if he's to go to the next level and start competing with Scheffler, then he's got to change something because at the minute it's just not working for him. Uh, you know, you only need to go on social media right now. There's people going, that's nah, a load of rubbish. He doesn't need to change his caddy. It's, it's him that's hitting the shots at the end of the day. Yeah, maybe. But I think having someone else there, a fresh pair of eyes on the bag, might be able to offer him something else. Um, could be yeah. could be the difference he needs. And as I say, he's been with that with Harry now for seven years. Um, and you look at the success he had before with JP. Um, I think he needs to change something. That's that's how I feel. Um, don't know about you guys. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a weird one. I I I particularly don't know how big an influence a caddy makes. I know when we saw that he said that he uh, talked to Butch Harmon, had a bit of a lesson from him for for several hours. That was, um, everyone was thinking, ah, oh, here it is. Here is the uh, turning corner. I'm more still in the line of, you know, when when a professional who hits, has it millions of balls, he has something, a bit of an advice from someone like Butch Harmon. I think it's going to take a bit of time for that to be ingrained. So I, I wouldn't say right now, we ch- change caddy I'd say more towards the end of the year because you have a lot of big things coming up and if yeah. he is doing something quite different with the swing changing it by you know recommendation from Butch we'll have to find out but I'll be honest I'm, I'm just not sure I'm similar to him I feel like I'm a bit of no man's land with Rory I don't really know what to do I mean Will you put you put 
30 big ones on him, um, didn't I believe <laughs> last, last uh, week, which was uh, stupid. Uh, what do you what do you think he should do? <laughs> it's it's a <laughs> it's a shame because I mean I know he's had a bit of an up and down season. Um, he came in like third at the was at Texas Open, and I thought that gave him a bit of a confidence boost going into the Masters. He's played the Masters before, and I know this whole um grand slam has been looming over his head the jack has been looming over his head and i really thought he was going to put it out of the bag with the um coaching from butch as well he was kind of getting his swinging gear everything just seemed to be going right leading into uh inevitably something that would make him at least top 10 for the masters but again i just don't know what's i don't know what's up with him i don't think he he probably doesn't even know what's up, up with him but i've said for a while i kind of agree with andy that i think a change of caddy is a lot, and I, I, I think they're an influence to a certain degree because you're, they're someone that you should fall back on if you're not, if you're unsure on a shot or unsure on how you should approach something. They should know your bag inside and out and know what you're capable of doing. And I feel like a lot of the time, maybe Rory asks him for his guidance, and he's kind of not forceful enough to be like, "No, Rory, I think you should do this instead." Mm. I think Rory sometimes gets in his own head and goes, "Oh, I'm capable of doing this, whatever," and they don't really have a conversation. I think he just goes for it. Yeah. So I think a change of a change of caddy could be a change of perspective. Um, mm. Yeah, and like I said, Andy, was it seven years he's been with them? Seven years, twenty seventeen. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's 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 going to be it might it might be a good change for him, but it's just a shame because it happens every year, doesn't it? We always think, oh, this it's Rory's it's Rory's year, it's Rory's year, it's Rory's year. It's boring. Right. Is he is he gonna do it? Yes. Is, <laughs> is, is he ever gonna yeah. do it? No, that that is the thing. I mean, I'd love to, I'd love for him to, but I, think, I, think I mean, he surely he will at some point. But I mean, yeah, there's too much there's too um, much talent there for him not to. I think. I, I think I saw <laughs> an article um, or a post someone another media company did saying, "Oh, is it if you don't win a green jacket, can you class your career as successful?" And I was just like, I genuinely don't think. I understand there's a lot of ah oh, what if type thing, especially with Rory at the Masters. But I don't think from whenever he retires in, in several decades' time, I don't think he'll look back and be like, oh, you know. I think he'll look back being like, well, I've probably won twenty, thirty golf tournaments, several majors, millions of millions and millions of pounds worth. I've done pretty well for myself. So I know we are scrutinising him. Um, I think rightfully so. We are scrutinising Rory McIlroy, but I think it's only because we can see how much talent this guy has. It's not because yeah, he's, we're thinking, of doing oh, he's not trying hard enough. Like he genuinely yeah. is the one of, if not the best golfer of the last several decades. And yes, I think he can have <laughs> a lot more majors, but it's just because we've all seen him. We've all been fortunate enough to see him yeah. when he has been hot. And when, when he is like that, there is no other player for me that I think could beat him. Even Scotty Schefter right now, I think Rory blows him out of the water. Um, data may tell me I'm incorrect, but I think that Rory, if you keep it consistent, <laughs> is is yeah. incredible. So but yeah. we'll, have, we'll have to see. But there were some other disappointing um, things that happened at the Masters, of course. Ron didn't make the cut. But for me, I want to talk about the most disappointing thing that happened at the Masters. Um, it generated a lot of uh, buzz. And rather than being about a golf shot, a golf incident, it was about an item of clothing from uh, none other than <laughs> Jason Day. <laughs> Jason Day this year uh, is our sponsored by Malvon, um, a golf clothing brand or a clothing brand that is particularly fond. Uh, or Will is Will is very fond of them. Loves the stuff. Um, I'm not fond of their price tags because they cost about a month's <laughs> rent per sock. But they make some rather uh, tongue-in-cheek clothing, and Jason Day has been wearing them from the last last few tournaments. I quite liked his parachute pants when they when he first, first wore them. They draw a lot of attention. Uh, I think when he first wore them at the Century, and they were. They're different, but we saw yeah. the is it the, the vest that he wore was it was it on I think it was on Thursday wasn't it and he removed it and it we it was found out that Friday, Augusta yeah. National Friday were morning, yeah. told him. it was a Friday Friday excuse, yeah, excuse my yeah. lack of knowledge there uh, but there yeah, he was he was told to remove it uh, by uh, someone at Augusta National which I don't know I'm gonna rather than ranting straight away Andy Johnny I'm gonna come to you what do you guys think about the the, the vest. Are you, are, you a, are you a fan of it to begin with? Do you think it was uh, just a bit... Just, I think we disagree on it, don't we? I don't, I don't know what you think Do you? You go first, because... You go first, because I, 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 um, I, think, I think I've got the counter-argument. But... I mean, that... Man the man wearing a vest. Yeah, counter-argument. 
aesthetic is right up my street. I actually love the parachute pants. I love the kind of slightly baggy fit. I think he looks, um, it's nice to just see a bit of a point of difference. Everyone else is quite streamlined, it gets a bit boring. Um, but the, I can completely understand why they asked him to take it off because I don't think it had anything to do with the cut or anything. I, it was because it, I think it was the wording because it said what Melbourne Championships 2024. So it was effectively like they were kind of promoting a separate tournament. Um, which is a bit cheeky for Melbourne because I don't think the Melbourne Championships is a thing, but it, it's like inevitably it's the kind of thing that are going to um, get under the skin of the organisers of Augusta. So I can understand why they asked him to take it off. I think the whole like backlash surrounding it online of like people like slagging it off and saying the parachute pants look like crap, um, maybe a little bit, a little bit poor. But I mean, people golf no stories are stuck in its way, so I'm not surprised to see new yeah. new gear, um, flustering feathers. That's not the right that's not the right expression, but you know what I mean. Um, I'll let you have it. I, I yeah, I like it personally. <laughs> I like Melbourne. We had an experience in Melbourne in in the PGA show, didn't we? And, uh, we did, yeah. It was pretty quite cool, quite cool, cool shot. Cool we brand. didn't feel 100% welcome there, admittedly. <laughs> it's a pretty brief chat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think this stuff's cool. I mean, I, 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 will, I will lump in with you on Alex about the price tags. Like, so I think it was like 285 quid for that vest, which I think is, is frankly That's crazy. Thing. But um, I mean, they're just trading off their kind of like rep, rep of the kind of like a cool LA, yeah. LA clothing brand slash lifestyle brand. So I guess they can do what they want. Yeah. Mm. Um, Andy, what do you what do you think? I, I just hope the paycheck was right for him. I, honestly, he must have been paid a fortune to wear this stuff. Um, uh, I mean, some of the gear is quite nice. There's, 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 there's some of it looks okay, right? There's some of it, but baggy trousers in the wind at Augusta. Pardon the pun. That is madness. Baggy trousers, madness. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, nah. I thought he looked like, you know, a cigarette packet wearing that Melbourne Golf Championship. Like it looked like Marlborough was written over him. It just. I look lit, man. But he lasted five holes on Friday until he was asked to remove it. Why would you? Surely they would ask yeah. Augusta, is no, this but, okay to wear? Surely but, this was. Surely this also, was all cleared like, and like fine. They uh, like, they published. Well, that's the thing. They've ages before. Augusta, so, yeah, they they've, they've obviously done, done it because we're talking about it now. You'd have thought someone would Maybe have thought it was a had the nows to check social media. Yeah. Look. But hey, it's what it is. Must have been April the 1st when they put it up. But <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it lasted five holes, <laughs> which said it all. Um, his chances just, I think he had a pretty poor, I think well, he made the cut, didn't he? Um, I'm not sure what he was wearing on Sunday. He looked like, was it a painter out? It was all white, wasn't it? It's like a, on Sunday, <laughs> and he actually played quite well. So we get it, Andy. You don't like it, right? Oh, no. <laughs> but on the whole, yeah, I just think uh, certainly not for me, and just I just think it looks um, bizarre. Um, I have to say though, I, I, I will agree with you. It did seem like a disadvantage because when it was really oh, yeah. windy on Friday, like, <laughs> the legs were like, like sails, um, and that was surely. I'm surprised it didn't take off. Quite, yeah, quite distracting, especially when you're putting. I can imagine that being really, really annoying. Yeah. I bet he won't be wearing them at Royal Tree. That's all I can say. He's wearing them when we see him in in July. Wow. Yeah. Like, you you, you know, nobody should be backing Jason Day for the Open if he's wearing a trousers. Nice pair of uh, slimline joggers. Let's hope. The uh, the crazy thing is, right, like, people are slating, like, his, the, the stuff that he wears. But, I mean, years ago, Baggy was, like, Baggy was in. Yeah. There's times where like Tiger Woods has worn really baggy polos, really baggy trousers. You yeah. take the likes of Ian Poulter wearing crazy wacky clothing, bright coloured, and like Payne Stewart, for God's sake. Like you got you've had clothing throughout the years of golf that's always been a bit whoa. Mm. But guy wears a s I, I get the vest situation because it had like Melbourne Championship on on something as decorative as the Masters. I kind of get that. But everything else, like it's not just the vest that they're slating. Like other people are slating the actual, like you said, the, the baggy trousers or whatever. But it's like it's a new, okay, I guess it's like a new age for golf. Like wear what you kind of want to wear to a certain degree. Like I, yeah. I love it. Like, like the baggy style, street style. Like that's What's me all over. The baggy like... trousers. <laughs> The poor baggy uh, trousers. The poor baggy trousers. They've had some good time these last few days. Well, like, I'm with you, bro. But um. You've got like Manners Golf, like have a similar kind of st- like streetwear style. 
you've got like bogey boys are kind of streetwear in a sense like i love the fact that you're bringing clothes that you'd wear out and about to the golf mm -hmm. course like you're not always going to wear like a polo tucked into trousers well that is to a sense but not as traditional as it used to be right um and i think it's just a new style it's a new style for new style for golf but um you know they've obviously done it for a reason Marvin. Do you not think this is now this whole like aftermath explosion of criticism, which is actually somewhat mm. rather personal to Jason Day in its own sense? It's exposing just how boring golf and some people who play golf really is. Because, like yeah. as you said, I love. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm with. I'm with you. Well, I'm with you, Johnny. Like wear what you want. I don't care if it's it's whatever, whatever color it is. Wear whatever makes you mm. happy. We're in a, life's too short to really care about a vest. I understand there are rules. Same as you know Wimbledon and tennis, you have to wear white clothing i guess august is somewhat similar in its, its etiquette but and i don't think that's a problem but i think the, the feedback that we got on social media just shows that i think people need to almost just like get a grip even and just like if you want to wear something wear it if you want to wear something that you think is cool wear it like if you go on so anyone watching or listening uh, go and have a look at some of the comments on social media that are made by you know Keith or Leonard or something who's 75 years old and watches TV still in a box that's this small and being like, oh, I wouldn't wear that. Just like grow up a little. It's 2024. Like wear things that are fine. Like the stuff that we wear from Puma is some, it's colorful and it's lovely and, and it's fun. I think golf as a sport, you should wear mm. what you want to wear. And I think, unfortunately, I understand mm. I, I understand where some people come from. Andy, I understand where you're coming from because I think everyone's entitled to an opinion. But I think some of the opinions were almost yeah. somewhat personal towards Jason Day being like, you're an idiot or something like that. And I'm like, well, yeah. what you want? Everyone's obviously entitled to give you feedback. But when there are tens of thousands yeah. of people calling Jason Day every single name under the sun, just just mm. play golf. Oh, I absolutely, I absolutely that's, that's... love Jason Day. He's, 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 he's an amazing guy. He's yeah. one of my favorite interviews. Honestly, he's a, he's a top, top guy. I wish him all the best. But I just, yeah. I think he must... I, I, be honest he must have been given a lot of money to go and join them that's all i'm going to say about it i think either way good I, I, I get news. That. it's yeah. great it's great great pr for them either way you know we're talking about them uh we're not talking about adidas we're not talking about footjoy apparel we're not talking about anyone yeah. else we're talking about malbonne either way whether you think it's yeah, good they know bad, exactly what they were doing it's in the news and that's what they wanted to do they wanted to make a stand probably yeah. knowing full well they'd be asked if, you know he'd be asked to take it off but at least you know, it's in the media. Everyone's going to talk about it. Now everyone, you probably didn't even know Melbourne at the biggest tournament in the world, is now probably going to look them up and yep. go, oh, well, I'll buy the hat. That's quite a nice hat. Or take the hoodie or whatever. Yeah. You're in now. Yes, you're there's in. 80 quid for a hat. That's, <laughs> that's, that was their goal at the end of the day. My, my problem with it is that I don't think it's benefiting his performance. And that that's all I will say. I, I think you can right. know what you want. I don't disagree with what you boys are saying. I, I just think to wear yeah. baggy trousers when it's actually blowing 40 mile an hour, He's not going to help. I you understand that at all. Um, so I'll leave no. it at that. I think probably the clothing Stylish choice was more, um, yeah. was more from a marketing sense than a style sense. Because as you said, I think yeah. they were probably there, you know, going yes well, about the vest, being like this is going to get a lot of people talking. It's a little bit left field mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. um, which, and then again, we're talking about it. It's all good. I imagine they'll probably learn from it and as we've said when it comes to Troon he will be wearing something a little bit more slimline for his bottoms let's, let's hope so anyway um, but we'll see I mean Melbourne if you're listening we'd all take a vest from sizes medium to extra large but yeah. I oh absolutely yeah you never know Definitely. yeah I mean they're, they're, they're lovely I don't or think at, least, at least a pair of socks for Alex that'd be great nah, <laughs> nah my, my ankles are out every single day in summer don't you worry anyway um, enough about Melbourne and controversial things such as that. So I think we've touched on it very well. It's now to get on to this week because for some reason the PGA Tour still decide to do one of their um, flagship tournaments the week after the Masters uh, when everyone's yeah, knackered yeah, from cool. walking uh, Augusta National. Yeah, an absolute uh, yeah, shit yeah. show to be honest with you, but it is what it is. It's something that they do for no reason. I thought they would have learned last year, but we've got a fun tournament. And I mean, from, from a consumer's point of view, I'm not complaining. We get to watch Scotty Scheffler win once again. Um, we're going to go through our predictions <laughs> because right now we are the uh, we are the best betting uh, podcast ever. We've all are all deeply in the money with our hypothetical fifty pounds. I am thirty pounds yeah. up, and you are a heavy chunk up. If I, how much are you up? Uh, two hundred. I forty on him at uh, four to one, so two hundred quid up. That'll nearly pay for the Malbon vest, uh, Johnny. Uh, <laughs> are you how how uh, how much are you are you are you thirty pounds up, Johnny? 
Similar to me? Something like that. I can't remember. I can't remember whether I had a Berg each way or to win. I think it was probably to win. So I'm. Um, it would yeah, be too. Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't have been. Be honest, Johnny. Yeah, come on. So he's got hundred back. Johnny's got a hundred. Okay, so you're hundred. We're hundred back. So you're up fifty then. Okay, you're better than me. Um, and then Will, you're up <coughs> ninety five, I believe, because you had each way on Mister Morikawa. So we are all doing very well. Yeah. But never, I think never, this never doubt. Ne- never, never doubt, Scotty. Colin was a, a slice of luck. But anyway, we'll move on from that. Uh, we're going to wow. talk about the you RBC Heritage this week because I think this is where we're going to get exposed for our golf knowledge because uh, it is a difficult course. It is very different from just picking the number one player in the world. I think we're probably mm. all going to do that either way. But uh, I'm going to go to Andy. Give me your three two fifty picks that you want with your hypothetical fifty pounds this week. Okay, cool. Um, it's difficult. I'm a chef, though. Obviously, you know his wife is expecting a child at the minute. Um, it's Good I think it's still a couple of weeks away from from his first child, so. I think he's. I think he's safe this week. Um, but he has said, if you know uh, Meredith does go into labour, then he's going to be withdrawing from the tournament. So you've got to take that um, on board with whether Bookie's going to be kind enough to give you your money back. I very much doubt it. Um, but I look. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep him in there this week because I think he's playing too well. As long as he's not tired, doesn't look like he's been on the lash. I think he attended. He was in a bar. He went straight back. To to, oh, he's in a pub, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, wearing the jacket. But I imagine he was well behaved. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's gonna take it. It's gonna take something out of him. You would think. I, look, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna play twenty quid Scheffler. I'm gonna keep it safe. Uh, I think he's what four to one this week. Maybe nine to two. I think he's yeah. probably drifting a little bit. Cause yeah. I think everyone's kind of thinking seven to two on Betfair. Is it? Yeah, he's probably That's awful a bit, a little I bit think he's, he's four to one on Skybet. So let's, let's, let's go four. Four to one. Okay, we'll have 20 on that. Yep. Um, it? Well, he's obviously going for four wins in five tournaments. You know, still should have won that Houston Open, really. Um, but just incredible. Was it 22 top threes now going back to February 2022, I believe? Um, as I said earlier, he's, he's, he's leading 28 different categories on the PJ Tour right now. Absolutely incredible golfer. <laughs> Uh, as we saw last week, and as he's doing, Alex, I don't think he had his his A game at the Masters at all last week. I thought he played quite well, but I don't think his tee to green game was as was you know kind of on point, let's say. Um, so I think even if he's playing it with his B game, I think I still think he's good enough. Um, so yeah, we'll have twenty on Scheffler. Then my two strong picks, who I'm pretty confident are going to do well this week. I think the course Hilton Head, as you as you um, alluded to, is very different test to Augusta. Not so much smash it off the tee, keep it in play. You want steady players, consistent players, and I think um, this golf course is right up Patrick Cantley Street, uh, sixteen to one. Uh, I know he splits opinion <laughs> with a lot of people, including Will. Um, I'm going to have 15 quid off Cantley at 16 to 1. Uh, six trips here. I only once has finished outside the top seven, which I really like. Uh, he finished uh, third last year, uh, narrowly missed out on the playoff. Played well last week. He had he had a bad finish. He was right on the cusp of the top 10. Uh, I think he had two late doubles um, coming home. Ended up finishing sort of um, just inside the top 30, I think. But um, there were signs there that Cantley was was playing okay and I think this course is he's back into his sort of um comfort zone this week so yeah 16 to 1 I think looks good um so I'll play that and I'll have my other 15 pounds on oh keep keep naming him keep naming him but Xander Schaeffler is gonna win soon um 11 to 1 this week uh fourth last year so clearly likes the course uh, 18 top 10 since his last win I mean, he's going to bang the door down soon. As I said last week, I think he's the second best player in the world right now. I'm going to—I still believe that. He finished eighth <clears> last week, didn't really play great, but still, you know, bumped himself into the top ten. Was never really in contention last week. Um, so yeah, Scheffler twenty quid and fifteen each on Cantley and Schaeffler. Johnny, I'm going to come to you now. See if you can uh, top that. Um, yeah, I mean. I've also gone for Cantley. I think his form here just means that he's a kind of shoe in to perform well again. It's a course where once people find a groove, they can just like 
just click in. I mean, David Club the third, I believe, won it five times. Let me just check that is correct. Uh, yeah, David Club the third won it five times. Luke Donald came second five times. So I think it's one of those courses that when people get comfortable at, they just they play really well. Um, and Cantlay has probably got the best form out of anyone in the field around that course. So I think he's a pretty good, yeah, pretty safe bet. Um, so I'm going to whack 20, 20 pounds on him to win. 20 of my best. Um, my yeah. second bet is Fleetwood, Tommy Fleetwood. Uh, good performance at the Masters. Nice. He came 15th at uh, the RBC last year, 10th of the year before. So it's an, again, it's a course that he's like quite comfortable at. Um, interestingly, I, he's, Fleetwood's one of those players that I've always kind of associated with really clean ball striking. So I thought that he'd have quite good yeah. uh, and approach green stats this season. Um, but he's actually really, really bad. He's a hundred, it's ranked 165th, which is a bit of course con cause for concern considering Harvard Town is notorious for its tiny greens. But despite that, uh, I'm still going to stick with him. He's still in search of his first PGA Tour title. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I just love Tommy Fleetwood. Who doesn't love a bit Tommy Fleetwood? I loved how Butch Harmon was really leaning into him during the Masters coverage. Like, I love every, time he was on, every time he was on screen, you could really him. tell he was one of his favourites. Rich Beam loves him as well. Yeah, I mean, he's just a popular, popular guy. Oh, he's a good lad. Fantastic lad. So yeah, I'm going to put, uh, so I'm 20, so I'm going to put 15, 15 nuggets on uh, Tommy Fleetwood. Hang on, you said 20, didn't you? No, that's uh, 20 on Cantley, 15, 15 Fleetwood, okay. and 15, uh, I'm going for some man who's going to try and go back to back, uh, oh, wow. Matthew Fitzpatrick, uh, at 25 okay. to 1, uh, obviously a course that he likes, very consistent, good putter, pretty good approach player, um, I wouldn't say he necessarily has any kind of glaring weaknesses in his game, um, didn't do terribly at the Masters, T22, so not a great week by his, uh, by his standards, um, but yeah, interviewed him last year. Seemed like a lovely fella, um, and I, I thought he came across really well on full swing. So I'm going partly vibes, partly stats. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going 15 of Fitzpatrick at 25 to one. Love it. Okay. Well, give me some picks. Give me some exciting picks. Okay, I'm gonna. I, my last, my third pick is nothing but vibes. And I kind of, we're just going to go with it. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to put 15 quid on Ludwig Aberg, oh, yes. uh, 12 to 1. Um, I feel like his, yes, Johnny, come on, respect the screen. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I, <love> that. <laughs> um, I feel like, honestly, he, this, he, he's, he's just a fantastic player. Really good kind of mental state. Seems like a genuine fellow. Um and I want to see him smiling more. So I reckon, yeah, let's put 15 quid on him, 12 to 1. <laughs> um, then I've got it. Huh? <laughs> no, I've got, no, I've no, got no, it. Like, so, genuine. Uh, <laughs> write that on the betting tips. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, write that on the slip before handing it in and then not getting anything back. Um, <laughs> then my, my other 15 pounds I'm going to put on, uh, 20 to 1. I've got to do Colin. Come on. I think he surprised a lot of people last week. Yeah. He's in form now. He's in form now. You, if you form. do, you'll do this face now. Next week we'll have a chat and you'll be like, oh my God, Will, you're so right. I should listen to so you. How was Colin's <laughs> missed cut? <laughs> <laughs> Who, right, you know what? I, I reckon he's learned a thing or two from one of the hardest, hot, 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 hardest courses in the world. Um, I think, yeah, I'm just going to, he's got, he's got good odds. Um, and the thing is, a lot of people, I know the Masters is just a completely different tournament, but a lot of people didn't pick him for the Masters and look where he ended up. So I, yeah, yeah I'm going to put on him because I, I think he's got something something in the bag. Mm -hmm. um, he knows what to work on for next time and he just needs to stop being greedy. And I think he's up there. Great, so we'll great, see. Uh, and, great loyalty, Will. I, uh, I think it's very admirable. Yeah, yeah. mate. I'm a, lo I'm a loyal bean. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then, and then my nothing but vibes, right? Nothing but vibes pick. I I actually was going to go with him for my master's pick before we had this chat before. And I went completely against it. And Johnny was like, oh, I thought you were going to go for this guy. I'm going for my man, Tom Kim. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He is currently 33 to 1. Yeah. Right? And his, he scored a 66 in his last yeah. round at, Mas at the Masters. Yeah. Six under. Uh yeah. He didn't, uh, I think, I believe he missed the cut last year. But anyway, we don't talk about that. We talk <laughs> about this year. Uh, and I think £20 on him at oh, wow. 33 to 1, according oh, to wow. Bet, Betfair. 
I think that's a that's a good that's a good, to good one to go for. Yeah. Wow, be flying prime yeah. for the rest oh, of the year. Right. That 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 wow, yeah. So I yeah, that's it. I'm uh, that's I, I think that's my pick. I think looking, I mean, looking at his uh, scorecard from the last round of the Masters, four back to back, but uh, yeah, birdie, 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 birdie. Mm-hmm. Like he got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight birdies in one round, mm. like two bogeys. But yeah, sixty-six. That's mm. pretty impressive. Um, but I think yeah, he could be an underdog. Could be an, could be a dark horse. So come on, come on, Alex. Um, I think, can you do it. better than that? Mine aren't that interesting, but I've gone for uh, someone to just get in the top ten. That's my like outsider pick. Um, it's Corey Connors. Time. <laughs> no, 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 no! That ship has sailed, brother. He is, uh, he is in the bin. Um, but not loyal. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not loyal. That's the thing with golfers. Are oh, if they if they piss me off, they go straight in the bin. But Ludwig, I've gone with as well. Ludwig, I am. Uh, I'm heavily on board with the Ludwig train. I, uh, I ball strike, yeah. of course. Obviously, heritage. Uh, the wind plays up a lot, but I think being European, he's probably fond of that a little bit. So I'm going to go for him. Uh, I'm going to go twenty pounds. Uh, is he fifteen? I believe he is. Um, which uh, is I'll bet fair. he is 12, 12 to 1 on bet oh, fair, I'm, but I'm bet fair stinky, man. I'm going sky bet because they're 15, so we're going to 20 on that. Um, I and then I'm going, yeah, we're going to be sky bet boys, sponsor us, please. So, uh, for my <laughs> second bet for 10 pounds, uh, I'm going um, Willie and not the Willie in this call. I'm going Willie Zalatoris. I have just yeah. have a little bit of a yeah. feeling. He had a sneaky 69 on the Sunday mm-hmm. um, at Augusta National. He uh, was trying to keep up with the likes of Tyrrell Hassan and whatnot, who were also scoring very well. Yeah, I know he's had a bit of an injury, but I think he did go a little bit under the radar um, at Augusta. And again, RBC Heritage, a bit of a ball striker tournament. Uh, you need high greens and rela- regulation and whatnot. I think he could mm-hmm. do well. A little bit of, again, a vibes pick. I'm not really blowing you guys away here with the research. And I'm, trust me, my third pick is nothing to do with that. But he is a 25 to 1, so I'll put £10 on him. And last but not least, I have changed last minute because I was going to do someone five pounds each way, mm. but instead um, he was but he was two hundred and fifty to one, so I, there was no point. Mm. Uh, so instead, I'm putting uh, ten pounds on him to place in the top ten, um, and he's actually won this year already, um, but he is fairly new to the PGA Tour despite hitting it about three hundred and fifty yards. So Mr. Jake Knapp oh, Mr. did Knapp. actually make the cut at mm. Augusta, um, and for some reason mm-hmm. I looked. At why on earth are you 250 to 1? I mean, we'll probably find out when he misses the cut. Um, but either way, I think I'd like to risk putting £10 on him to uh, get in the top 10. And he's, uh, I think he's 14 to 1 to do that. So I get me £150 back. Yeah. I'm kind of covering my bases. He looked a bit tired to me last week. He looked a bit tired to me last week. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> 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 I mean, he, might, he, he might miss the car. He might withdraw. I, I, honestly, I, he's one of my favourite players. The swing is the smoothest. What's his, uh, what's his surname? Nap. Nap. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He got there in the end. Anyway, what was your, what was that, that is what the was your... awful podcast presented by Golf Magic. We're now all going to go and uh, research our picks a little bit more, as it was, especially myself. But uh, we'll have a look. <laughs> and next week, uh, we will touch upon the RBC Heritage and a lot more. And I will say right now, I've been doing some research and I know who's going to win the PGA Championship and I know who's going to win the Open. Ooh, so wow. perhaps we can touch upon that next week. And uh, we're going to go dive deep into Live Golf next week as well and what's in store for the rest of 2024. So thank you guys very much for either watching or listening. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you can, of course, listen if you're driving to work or anywhere on Spotify, on Apple and a lot more. Hello to Golf Magic for everything from golf news to golf equipment reviews. And we will catch you guys at the next one.